Hello students, hello everyone. Welcome to Senior College Mathematics. Topic of discussion is matrix and determinants. Matrix and determinants. This is another important topic that you should know as a student in the senior college level. So if you are a senior college, Prepare it for WAYEC, for NECO, for GC, for NAPTEC, for JAM, or any other external exams into high school. I tell you this topic, this lesson is a must learn and watch for you. Okay? Lesson one definition and types. Definition of a matrix and type of matrices. We'll look at that extensively in this lesson. Before that, for updates, follow Peter Course Educom via YouTube at Peter Course Simplified Maths. To do that, subscribe to this channel, like and share this video to your friends, your colleagues, your classmates. Facebook, fb.means slash Peter Educom, Instagram at Peter Cos EC, Telegram, t.means slash Peter Cos Educom, WhatsApp through this mobile telephone number. In all of these platforms, you get updated from time to time about what is happening at Peter Cos Educator Community, where you have access to quality, unlimited, and simplified mathematics in series very very important you know here we teach and we learn in series bit by bit okay so let's take definition of a matrix now if you have been to any supermarket around you see that the products or what they are selling they are arranged in some pattern for instance, where they are selling maybe paste or bonvita, all those uh, items, you cannot see such items where they are selling uh, wine or drugs. You know, they are always arranged in a pattern so that you are directed. What do you want? So, so item, you know where to go if you are familiar with that supermarket so same thing we want to talk about in matrix so a matrix is a set of numbers arranged in a rectangular pattern rectangular pattern and enclosed in a square or round brackets so the pattern is rectangular and the numbers are enclosed. That is, they are inside a square or round brackets. When you arrange number or any items and they are not enclosed in a square or round bracket, they are not in matrix form. So the difference between ordinary arrangement and matrix is that the numbers, the set of numbers, or what you are considering are enclosed in a square or round bracket. That is one. Secondly, a matrix can also be defined as a rectangular array. Array means arrangement. Arrangement of numbers you have subject to certain laws of combination certain laws of combination maybe such law can be you should start from the from the list to the highest or from the highest to the list or mixture of both okay a matrix is denoted by a capital letter such as a b c what this means is that every matrix has a name and the name is any letter of the alphabet the uppercase precisely that is the name of a matrix 
For example, a college has its number of students in each of the SSS class classified as follows. So you have male and female. For SS1, you have 28 males, 39 females. SS2, you have 34 males, 25 females. SS3, SS3, you have 33 males, then 22 females. Now you can see that if we take the number of students from each of the classes, you can see that the arrangement, the pattern is rectangular. Rectangular pattern. But it's not yet in matrix until it is enclosed in a square or round bracket. So the above information can be represented in matrix form, say, matrix A equal to, so you can see there, 2839 for SS1, 3225 for SS2, 3322 for SS3. So the name of the matrix is A is a so a can be the school in question that is about that one we must know again is order of a matrix every matrix has an order so that order help us to to determine the size so in other words order of a matrix also means the size or order itself or dimension of a matrix so to identify the size or order or dimension of a matrix the number of rows m are counted first before the number of columns n so in the order of a matrix there are two things involved the number of rows denoted by letter m and the number of columns denoted by letter n in the matrix above the first row represents ss1 second row represents ss2 and the third row represents ss3 while the first column represents the male and the second column represents the female okay so let's go back and uh, view that matrix one more time one more time so you can see there now the first row so the row is moving it's like moving from left to right that is row wise so this is the first row which represents ss1 students you have the second row for ss2 students you have the third row for SS3 student. Why the column is like moving from up to down or down to up. So you have male. This is the column for male and the column for female. So this row and column helps us to get the order or size or dimension of any matrix. Okay? So this is the matrix now. This is the matrix. So if you look at this, remember we said that in the order, number of rows are counted first. So in this place, you have the first row, you have second row, and you have third row. So we have three rows in this matrix. Why for the column, you have the first column and the second column. The meaning is the order of matrix A above is 3 by 2. That times Z does not really mean times in order of a matrix. It means 3 by 2 matrix. That is, the matrix has 3 rows and 2 columns.
so in this the number of rows always come first before the number of columns did you get that okay i can see you nodding your head that's beautiful okay so let's look at another thing position of elements in a matrix you know in every family all the children have their own position maybe the the first child the second child the last child normally called last card in some homes so the same thing in matrix each element or entry has a position so let's look at a general matrix named as a you know this can be any size can be three by three three by two like that so you must know that you must know that each element or number in the matrix is called element or entry each number in the matrix each of the number at least a11 a12 you call the element or entry in the matrix above the horizontal that is the row components are you have a sub do what i mean now this is the horizontal or row components you have a sub one one a sub one two a sub one three like that and others then the vertical that is the column component that is taking this now this is vertical or the column component you have a sub one one a sub two one a sub three one then dot 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 to a sub m one a sub m one in that form we also have another another column then others then others okay after this so let's try to get the position of each element so let's take element a sub one one that is a subscript one one so this means element in the first row so the first the one there means first row and the second one means first column so element in the first row and first column that is a sub one one is a sub one one itself that's the element in that position okay so let's consider the matrix for the number of male and female students in that school so we have the matrix the name is a that has three rows and two columns so let's take a sub one one a sub one one means the element in the first row and first column that element is 28 first row first column if you take a one two so the one means first row and the two is second column first row second column so we are still in first row now that is 39 and second column same 39 you see that then if we go to a two one remember the number of rows comes first so two means second row and one first column that is 34 a two two so a two two means second row second column second row second column that is 25 that is 25 okay so a22 two, two is 25 next one is a31 a31 means the element in third row first column that is 33 then a32 a32 that is the element in second element in third row second column that is 22 so this explains the position of elements in a matrix so the next is types of matrices 
types of matrices. The following are types of matrices. The first one is row matrix. A matrix which has exactly one row. Exactly one row is called a row matrix. For example, you can see the element 1, 2, 3, 4. They are enclosed in a round bracket. That makes it a row matrix. That is horizontal component, just one of it. All right. Secondly, you have color matrix. A matrix which has exactly one color is called a column matrix. For example, five, six, seven, enclosed in a round bracket. So this is a vertical component, just one of it. So one column is referred to as a column matrix. Number three, you have square matrix. This type of matrix has equal number of rows and columns. A square matrix has equal number of rows and columns. A square matrix is donated by the general M by N matrix. This is the general order of a square matrix where M is equal to N number of rows equal to number of columns. For example, look at this matrix 2 by 2. You see that? The number of rows 2, number of columns 2. It's a square matrix. Another matrix, this is a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay, you have a, a 3 by 3 matrix there because the number of rows are 3 number of columns are also three so you call this three by three square matrix number four type you have a non or zero matrix a non or zero matrix a matrix whose elements or entries is zero all of them zero is called a non or zero matrix for example look at this matrix Zero, 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 zero. You have two rows and two columns. So this is a non or zero matrix. Type five, you have a diagonal matrix. Now listen, a diagonal matrix is a square matrix. That means the number of rows and columns are equal. Then whose every element above and below the diagonal are zeros. Now this is the leading or the main diagonal. You can see there. So if the elements above 2, 2, 6 and below it are zero, you call it a diagonal matrix. Of course, a 3 by 3 matrix that also makes it a square matrix. All right. Note that diagonal element in the diagonal matrix may also be zero. In other words, this matrix here can serve two types of matrices. That is a non or zero matrix and a diagonal matrix because the element below and above the main diagonal are also zero. Type C, you have a scalar matrix. A scalar matrix. A scalar matrix is a diagonal matrix. That means it is also a square matrix. You must understand the, the progression from square matrix to diagonal matrix to a scalar matrix. One more type is ahead. So a scalar matrix is a diagonal matrix whose diagonal elements are equal are equal in diagonal matrix diagonal elements are not equal but for a scalar matrix diagonal elements are equal for example you can see there five five they are equal you have two 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 then you have zero 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 so 
what makes these three matrices diagonal matrix is that the element above and below the main the diagonal the elements are zero and since diagonal elements are all equal we refer to it or them as scalar matrix scalar matrix type 7 you have identity matrix also called a unit matrix so an identity matrix is a diagonal matrix which means it's also a square matrix the number of rows and elements are equal in which diagonal elements are all equal to unitary unitary means one in scalar matrix diagonal elements are equal but not one once they are all one or through what you have is an identity matrix or a unit matrix so note the difference between a square matrix a diagonal matrix a scalar matrix and identity matrix type 8 you have a rectangular matrix we can quickly compare this to a square matrix in a square matrix the numbers of rows and columns are equal but in rectangular matrix the number of rows and columns are different if you would take it to plain plain uh, plain shape you know a square has all its size or length equal so but a rectangle has two size length and breadth the the the, the length is longer than the breadth and you can see that in this matrix so the, so the length now is like the row is longer two rows and the breadth is the color wise so in this matrix n is not equal to n that is number of rows is not equal to number of columns that is a rectangular matrix type 9 you have upper triangular matrix upper triangular matrix this is a matrix in which the elements located below the diagonal are zeros now can look what we have here now the diagonal element is 1 minus 3 and 2 now if you try to take it up and close it what you have is like a triangle that the element below they are zero so you call this upper triangular element triangle is formed in the upper region the same thing here another example type 10 lower triangular matrix this is a matrix in which the elements located above the diagonals are zero now look at it diagonal element you have two two six you take it down and you close you have a you have a triangle in the lower part because the elements above the diagonal element two two six they are zeros so this is upper triangular matrix and lower triangular matrix we have type 11 transpose matrix transpose matrix now given matrix p matrix p that's the name the transpose of matrix p is another matrix denoted p to the power of t so t there means transpose where the elements in the columns and rows are interchanged or switched so if you take the elements in the column sense in matrix p and change them to the rows and rows back to column you have the transpose of matrix p in other words the rows become columns and the columns becomes rows okay for example i look at matrix p it's a three by three matrix 
three rows, three columns. Now look at the transpose of P E to the power of T now. Now, come to view now. So this is the first row. So this is the first co column now. Okay, first column. The first column you have two, one, four. If you sh change this first column to the first row here, that is two, one, four. Then the second column, two, three, minus five, and you make it the second row, three, two, minus five. You take the third column, zero, nine, six, and make it the third row. What you have is transpose. Now you can also do it row Y. For example, you take the first row three, two, three, zero, and make it the first column here two, three, zero. See that? Do that for all. So when you are doing it, you don't miss rows and column. If you are taking it column wise, you maintain it all true. If you are taking row wise, you maintain it all true as well. Once you do that, the outcome is the transpose of that matrix. Okay? We have properties of transpose matrix. The first one is transpose of a transpose. Now, matrix A T now A power T is a transpose matrix. If you take the transpose of a transpose matrix, you have back the matrix itself. That's meaning transpose of a sum. If you add two matrices and you take their transpose, is equal to taking the individual transpose of the matrices and you add them together. Number three property transpose of a scalar multiple so here k scalar means constant that multiply matrix a if you multiply matrix a by a scalar and you take the transpose is the same thing as multiplying the transpose matrix by the scalar that's a constant transpose of a product if you multiply matrix a and b together and you take their transpose is the same thing as taking the product of the transpose of the two but you know the order here in the first one is a b but for it to be equal you must start with the second matrix so a times b transpose is equal to b transpose times a transpose another one is transpose of inverse so you have this matrix A transpose, this power minus 1 indicate inverse, indicate inverse. If you take the inverse of the matrix before you transpose it, you have the same result. Another one there is transpose of determinant. Determinant, we'll look at that later. If you transpose a matrix and take it determinant, it's the same thing. As the determinant of the matrix without transpose so we have these properties of transpose matrix properties 2 and 4 can be realized to cover the sums and products of any finite matrices for, for instance the transpose of the sum of three matrices is that is we are trying to compare this now that this is known for only two matrices. Now that we have three matrices, A plus B plus C. If you add the three matrices and you take their transpose, it's the same thing as taking the transpose of individual matrices and you add them together. For a product, that is, comparing this now, it can also be done for three matrices, A, B, C transpose, is not equal to the third method you start from the third one that is c transpose times b transpose times a transpose is equal to a b c transpose so we have these properties of transpose matrix 
all right you following yes so in fact i'm even enjoying it myself i know your own will be greater enjoyment all right end of lesson one thanks for watching and learning with peter Kors education community don't forget watch out for more from the voice of peter Kors. the voice you are hearing is the voice of peter Kors. for questions and inquiries use the comment section and we attend to them for the complete package of this topic lesson 1 to 11 for offline usage contact the voice of peter calls via this street whatsapp number or the email address at a very little token you get the complete package delivered to you lastly if you are not safe your life will be in crisis to avoid that you need to give your life to the one that can save you and that is the lord jesus christ and you confess him as your lord and personal savior daily if you are saved already tell you be congratulations live righteously and be prepared because on the last day some will be taken and some will be left take good care of yourself stay out of trouble stay well study your books do the needful at all time flee every appearance of evil don't defraud others to make money use your hands and your brain to work genuinely and the lord will bless you goodbye for now